Hello, I'm Camelia and this is Kini News. It's not often we hear Shakespeare being quoted in Dewan Rakyat. But that's what happened today when Anwar Ibrahim slammed the opposition leader for resorting to personal attacks in the House. Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim defended the vote of confidence yesterday, saying it was needed to prove his legitimacy after Muhyiddin Yassin questioned it. He then said he is open to criticism from anyone and will open his ears, even if it is painful to hear. However, quoting William Shakespeare, the premier said at times criticism can be unconstructive. Uh, he quote Shakespeare, a tale told by an idiot, full of sound and fury, signifying nothing. He said one example is remarks by opposition leader Hamza Zainuddin, whom he accused of launching personal attacks against him. Hamza yesterday goaded Anwar to sue a European news outlet, which called the premier a full-blown homosexual when reporting on his appointment. On the royal pardon he received in 2018 over his sodomy conviction, Anwar said he did not ask for the pardon. Instead, he said the young Deportuan Agong at the time, Kelantan's Sultan Muhammad V, took the initiative to pardon him. Anwar claims Sultan Muhammad described his case as a travesty of justice during a phone call while he was still in detention at the Cheras Rehabilitation Hospital. Clear travesty of justice. I quote in phrase yang digunakan oleh yang Deportuan Agong ialah travesty of justice. Anwar also told PN lawmakers in Kelantan they can meet with the monarch themselves to verify this. If you're wondering where Hamza got the article from, it appears to be from an obscure source that even those living in Italy for decades are not aware of. Communications and Digital Minister Fahmi Fadzil has accused opposition leader Hamza Zainuddin of attempting to scam the public. This after the Larut MP cited a report yesterday by an Italian news outlet called Agenzia Nova claiming that Anwar Ibrahim was Malaysia's first full-blown homosexual prime minister. Fahmi said he thought Hamza cited a website that was on the level of Bernama, BBC or the New York Times. However, it turns out the website is nothing. Fahmi added that there is also no name for the journalist who wrote the article. Writing on Twitter, Fahmi told Hamza not to try to scam. Fahmi attached a screenshot of most read news websites in Italy in a report by the Reuters Institute for the Study of Journalism. In the screenshot, Agenzia Nova is not on the list of most read websites. In a separate Twitter post, Fahmi further claimed that even Italians have not heard of the news outlet, attaching a screenshot of a WhatsApp conversation with an unknown person. The unnamed person claimed that they had never heard of the outlet in their 33 years of living. Parliament did not appear to be as chaotic today compared to yesterday, with the opposition praising Anwar Ibrahim and saying they have full confidence in him as finance minister. Soon after the mini-budget was passed by the lower house with little drama. The Dewan Rakyat has passed the mini-budget without any debates or clarifications. Speaker Johari Abdul earlier said lawmakers can debate the motion, but they cannot touch upon policy matters and should only focus on the specific details of the funds. Opposition MPs tried to convince the Speaker to allow them to debate more freely, but several government lawmakers, including Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim, explained there is no need for such a thorough debate on policies. They argue this is because the mini-budget only covers civil service emoluments and funding for urgent existing projects, which have already been debated previously. Eventually, opposition leader Hamza Zainuddin quipped they had absolute confidence in Anwar and suggested the motion be approved unanimously. Apa yang kita nak ambil hal, saya dah percaya dengan yang amat berhormat Menteri Kewangan ini. Dia hebat, dia akan lakukan yang terbaik, penjelasan yang baik, yang inilah yang kita nak. Okay, tim sebab itu saya saya yakin usul itu usul yang baik untuk kita semua luluskan. Maka kami di sini mencadangkan untuk usul itu diluluskan sebulat suara. Okay. Johari proceeds with the vote and the mini budget successfully passes with a voice vote. Anwar has initiated legal action against Muhyiddin Yassin over claims the prime minister calls slanderous, false and disparaging. Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim has launched a defamation suit against predecessor Muhyiddin Yassin. 
This is over an allegation that Anwar received 15 million ringgit for serving as Selangor's economic advisor. Anwar's lead counsel, Sankara Nair, confirmed with Malaysia Kini that the writ of summons was filed at the Kuala Lumpur High Court this morning. Previously, on December 7th, Anwar issued a letter of demand that gave Pagoh MP Muhyiddin three days to make an unqualified apology. Anwar also demanded Muhyiddin to retract the claim carried in an alleged TikTok upload and issue a written undertaking not to repeat the claim. The letter of demand was over the Muhyiddin statement purportedly made during the PN Grand Finale Chrama on December 5th in the run-up to the Padang Sarai election. On December 7th, the Selangor Menteri Basar's office refuted Muhyiddin's claims. The office added that Anwar was only paid a symbolic one ringgit per month during the advisory stint. Meanwhile, Anwar rubbished Muhyiddin's claim as slanderous, false and disparaging against him, as well as made with malice. The family members of SOSMA detainees were joined by several government lawmakers outside Parliament today to submit a memorandum to the Home Minister, all in the name of justice and fair trial for detainees. Klang MP V. Ganabatira was among the five Hindraf leaders held under the Internal Security Act 15 years ago. Saya di pernah ditahan tanpa bicara selama 495 hari. Eh? Saya faham masalah yang dihadapi oleh semua pihak. Eh? Maka saya percaya antara yang tak setuju dengan pandangan bahawa sosma perlu diteruskan adalah saya sendiri. The DAP lawmaker was referring to the Controversial Security Officer Special Measures Act, also known as SOSMA, which replaced the ISA. Ganabatirao and two other Pakatan Harapan MPs, Chiu Chunman and RSN Rayer, had inked a memorandum to Home Minister Saifuddin Nasution Ismail, requesting bail for SOSMA detainees and for the legislation to be reviewed. Pledging to pursue the matter with the minister because he wanted justice and fair trial for the detainees. Ganabatirao added that the appropriate question is whether or not it breaches human rights to arrest people without reason or evidence. Rights Group Swaram representatives and families of the detainees had gathered outside Parliament this morning to submit the memorandum, which was received by Saifuddin's aide. So how long? How long we are need to struggling? How long we need to struggling? I'm as a mom, I'm a single mother. I got two more kids at home. How I'm going to survive everything? I need to look after the two of my boys inside the prison. Who is going to be give me your money? Parents are struggling. In the memorandum, the families requested Saifuddin to review provisions in the law, which are deemed to be unjust and argued that SOSMA detentions run foul of the federal constitution. Meanwhile, Swaram coordinator Azura Nasron describes SOSMA as tyrannical. The operator of the campsite in Batangkali, crushed by a deadly landslide, has broken their silence. A spokesperson explained why they do not have a permit. The operator of the campsite at Father's Organic Farm in Batangkali said he could not apply for a campsite license because no such permit existed. This is after the campsite was hit by a deadly landslide last Friday. At a press conference held in Kuala Lumpur yesterday, campsite spokesperson Frankie Tan said he was told by various government entities that there is no such license the campsite operator could apply for. He said he was informed by a government officer that this is because the campsite was not a permanent structure like a hotel. He further clarified that it is not that they did not want to apply for a permit, but there is no way for them to apply for one. Tan also explained that the landslide did not start in their campsite but on government land and a roadside. He said he was unaware of the area being classified as a high-risk area. Starting as an organic farm, Tan said he only started to provide camping services in 2017 following requests made by visitors. In the incident, at about 2.42 a.m. on December 16th, a landslide hit the campsite at Jalan Genting, Batangkali. 24 were killed, while 9 victims are still missing. A total of 61 victims have been rescued. The campsite operator and staff were summoned for a police investigation on December 18th. Prior to this, local government development minister Nga Korming said the campsite was operating without a license from the Hulu Slangor District Council. Malaysia Kini has texted Nga for comment. Anwar continues to receive congratulatory messages from foreign leaders, this time from Palestine. 
During a call, Anwar assured President Mahmoud Abbas that Malaysia will continue to support the Palestinian cause. Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim has expressed his dream to visit an independent Palestine. Anwar said this after he was personally invited by Palestine President Mahmoud Abbas via a phone call yesterday. Mahmoud has called Anwar to congratulate him on his appointment as Malaysia's 10th Prime Minister. A video of their conversation was shared on Anwar's Facebook yesterday. My dear brother Yasser Arafat invited me since 1983 in the PLO conference in Algiers. I was there and he treated me like his son. The same invitation to your Excellency at any time to Palestine, we will be honored to receive you here in Palestine. Shukran Hadar Rais. I mean, of course, I look forward to. I've never been there and uh, it is my dream to go there and particularly to an independent Palestine, inshallah. In the conversation, Mahmoud, who invited Anwar to visit Palestine at any time, said Palestine would be honored to receive Anwar in their land. During the conversation, which took more than six minutes, Mahmoud also expressed his appreciation for Anwar's support for the Palestinians. Anwar said his administration would continue supporting the cause for Palestinians and condemn all sorts of harassment and attempt to dispose of the rights of the Palestinians. Thanking Anwar for the support, Mahmoud said Palestine wanted to open all its doors for trade and cooperation as well as economic relations between Palestine and Malaysia. Anwar replied that he would inform the cabinet of such kind remarks and Mahmoud's intention to enhance bilateral cooperation, investment, trade, culture and education. And that is all from me today. For more stories, you can go to kinitv.com. You can also follow us on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube and Facebook for the latest news updates. If you'd like to support independent media, do consider subscribing to malaysiakini.com. I'm Kimilia. Thanks for watching.